Hey guys, it's Mathel here once again, and before I get into the build video, I'm just going to let the sounds and sights do some of the talking for me for a couple of minutes. that are god untouchable So there it is, quite possibly some of the most satisfying visuals and sounds or uh, audio cues in the game at the moment, and that is from the Beefton, I think 4.0 at this point. The original Beefton was a Blade Vortex Chieftain, and this is the second coming of that character. And the sound and sights are uh, largely because of the explosion chest from the Crusader mod, and then the Dragon Hunter Herald of Ash. The clear that you're seeing with the really large chain explosions, that's pretty much purely just the explosion chest itself, but once you add some Herald of Ash on there with the Dragon Hunter uh, microtransaction, it does pretty it up just a little and also gives it a very nice sound. There are some actual um, other ones as well you can use, some other Herald of Ashes. For example, the Sun Prism one has a very dull thud to it. The Automaton one has like a bubble wrap level of pop to it. But uh, they're just purely for aesthetic purposes, but fuck me, they are worth it. Uh, if you don't have any of those, then you would still just have the same level of clear with an explosion chest, but it won't be quite as pretty or quite as uh, audibly orgasmic. Anyway, you can kind of see that uh, Beefton 4.0, or the second time around as a Chieftain Blade Vortex, is quite a big success. Uh, the, big, the biggest difference is definitely the explosion chest, but also there's cluster jewels incorporated and a few other little bits and pieces that make it kind of a uh, probably more competitive character clear speed wise, but possibly uh, less on the single target spectrum. I have yet to actually take on any of the proper end game content, only um, been doing up to tier 14. Uh, 15 and uh, just working on some double beyonds, some simulacrums, some fun shit rather than actually proccing the uh, Conqueror's Guardians and Cirrus himself. But I think the DPS should be good enough uh, long term. It's just that uh, I've yet to actually fully test it, so I can't throw my weight behind that decision. But a lot of the um, clear speed that's being uh, really um, carried here is by the explosion chest and since we are full converting fizz to fire i do believe 
that the uh, explosion chest gets converted as well. We've got a lot of fire damage, a lot of generic damage, and that also gets scaled. So these explosions are fucking potent. As you can see, uh, some of these maps are like tier 14, tier 15, double beyond, sextanted, uh, covered in um, scarabs and also 60% delirium I think and uh, for the most part just about no bosses live, no beyond lives, nothing really lives, it just gets bloofed as soon as anything else gets bloofed. So it's been extremely efficient, it's been somewhat tanky, uh, well we'll say actually rather tanky because I've got about 15k armor thanks to the armor scaling I'm using from the formless inferno and then uh, got some good leech, some good recovery, some good defensive mechanics. Uh, overall it does not die often. I think I've died a couple of times up to level 93 on just a few uh, little mistakes basically. Not because uh, you can't handle it, it's because I was like reading chat or some shit. Um, because you can see these chain explosions basically just cleared up this entire legion room. I went after the legion popped to go investigate what was happening. Everything's already dead. Uh, and then we did a simulacrum run, just the one so far, and uh, that was Deathless, though Kosis at uh, wave 20, and some of these mods, once you get shocked and stuff, can be rather lethal, but uh, they can all be rather lethal in simulacrum, I'm not sure you can ever really avoid that, unless you have a truly, truly busted build. Uh, but we did get through it deathless and it is definitely doable deathless as well But uh, yeah, look nothing but high praises for this character so far I do want to however show you how I've built the character uh, a few of the differences from the original beefton and um, Just a few comments on Maybe whether or not it could be a starter build. So here we are with the now level 92 people beef spin um, I'm twitch emote and people Wanted me to do it. Yep. Uh, so it is a chieftain. It is level 92, almost level 93 even, because uh, we've just been doing non-stop like really thick maps that give off like one level per map. Can't really help getting this far ahead at this stage. And uh, it does not have the biggest, thickest amount of life, but it is a pretty tanky character, at least by my standards, uh, with the large amount of armor. Um, and leech we have thanks to running a formless inferno first time I've ever used this item figured I may as well simply because I knew I was going to have too much fire airs in the build and uh, I kind of wanted to use it to my advantage somehow um, even though the whole armor thing and this helm isn't the best but I figured it was worth doing at least one time and yeah you can see we've got 340 uh, fire resist which leads into having uh, about 12,000 armor but with a uh, molten shell up a little bit more and then vile molten shell even um, gonna be a little bit more than that too but uh, there's not really anything super specific in the build except for having an explosion chest and as you may tell mine is a rather good one uh, most of the video you just then saw would not have had the plus two implicit uh, except for well the one I recorded in isolation uh, I crafted the chest by awakener orb slamming a plus one so um, socket support and explosion mod so awakener orb smash those together and then ideally you just have a spare prefix for life uh, I was then forced to violet thanks to one of my viewers and plus two socket of AOE which is uh, actually pretty damn good. Uh, you will get by without something this insane and the plus one socket support is only really relevant if you're using empower anyway but uh, uh, we're not currently using LE focus for example and we certainly can which would just completely supplement or remove the empower from the equation and the plus one support and uh, possibly even give us a bit more damage. Um, I'm not currently using early focus though, uh, so I've got that in the um, sort of bank as a extra support if I need it. But uh, the difficulty here is that if you want to use an armor base sort of item that's pure armor instead of armor energy shield then getting uh, six off colors and getting rid of the red is kind of difficult so if you want just all blues and one green then you probably have to go with saintly chainmail and you won't be really losing much armor it's just a little bit harder to craft the uh, specific mods you want on a hybrid chest I think anyway 
Uh, but other than that, we've got Vile Blade Vortex, which as you can see is level 29. If I went just a little bit harder, and uh, I'll show you in a minute, got plus one over here, it could hit level 30, and if it hits level 30, then it's got another point of radius. So that's something you can min-max in this type of a build. Uh, we've got Unleash, Efficacy, Intensify, and Control Destruction. So intensify gives you area most of the time while mapping because you're not really actually stacking Intensify. You're just doing this and getting lots of area and then running on. But it's really nice because when you want to come across a tougher single target and do some single target damage, you stand still, stack your Intensify, and you will be hitting harder. Uh, and then we've also got Unleash, and that just means that you will stack up a few sort of stacks of the attack, uh, or the spell in this case, and then um, unleash them all at once with every button press. So realistically, it's going to be keeping up 10 stacks of Blade Vortex a lot quicker than if you were doing something else, or at least a lot smoother since you have to press it less time. So you're running, you press it once, boom, already four stacks, press it again, another four stacks, and then you're at 10 stacks and that will last a few seconds. Uh, whereas you can otherwise use like faster casting or spell echo, but um, it will require more button presses. I'll probably start subbing this one out for an actual damage support when we're doing single target, but for the time being, it's absolutely fine, and I've been using this the entire time. Uh, all right, I think that's most of the uh, intricate shit there. We're then scaling our um, Herald of Ash to do quite a bit more damage. Uh, for some reason, felt like doing it and wanted to use Lone Messenger. Uh, for the first time ever, which is this little uh, unique small jewel. I'm not sure it's much better to do this and no aura um, versus, let's say, an aura and then some hysteria rings, but these are pretty cheap with buff effect and fire res, so I figured, like I said, I was going to have a lot of fire res because I went the cheap route for these um, circle of anguishes, and uh, yeah, why not? And ends up working out pretty well. Lots of fire res, lots of buff effect. Uh, the Herald of Ash itself is granting us a decent chunk of damage. And then you can still use a couple of auras, a couple of shitty makeshift auras, which is Arctic Armor and um, Aspect of the Spider. Uh, so they're not technically auras, but they are still very useful for this type of build. So overall, if you factor those in, then it probably is worth um, using just a Herald of Ash as opposed to uh, a different sort of aura altogether. Uh, I tested without Herald of Ash and without Lone Messenger, and I don't think those things at all are impacting our big explosion clear speed um, from the uh, Explodey chest. Uh, there's no synergy there, I don't think. It's just purely adding a whole bunch of aesthetics. Um, but other than that, Herald of Ash does add a lot of damage. Uh, besides that, there's not too much else to mention on the passive tree. It's still very much just like a vanilla, non-crit, fire passive tree, and there's not much you can do with cluster jewels. Uh, so I've done the best I can compared to the last uh, beefed in version. We do have elemental overload. We do pick up avatar fire for our um, fizz conversion so that we have 100% fizz converted from Hya and Hya. Uh, and our large cluster is very weak. I just picked up whatever the fuck I could. It gave me a bit of extra damage. So we got Disorienting Display, which would be up sometimes, thanks to uh, Molten Shell, Orb of Storms, and Flame Dash, won't trigger off a Blade Vortex. Uh, smoking Remains, bit of damage, and some Smoke Cloud sometimes, some uh, resists and uh, damage here. And then that enables a couple of mediums, and in this case, it's Cooked Alive and Master of Fire. So this is how we get our exposure in the build. Uh, attached to the Lone Messenger, and then a Megalomaniac. I was just looking for um, Cooked Alive and then comboed with some things as I was scrolling through, and the best one I could find for uh, cheap, so I think this was like 50C, is uh, Force Multiplier and Heart of Iron. Heart of Iron gives us a little bit of extra armor. It's not super important, but I figured why not stack just a bit more, so you can see that's the impact there. And uh, Force Multiplier, well, it's a little bit of damage, so like 6% of our damage or something like that. So why not get that too? But you could otherwise just go a regular meeting with Cooked Alive and something else and then branch out to another life node. Uh, if I could go back and do it again, I probably would do that because uh, my last few points from like 89 to 93, 94, I'm just searching for more life and there's not much I can do to get it. So I had to just um, 
start taking like three point jewels that do pretty mediocre things. Uh, we do have one interesting kind of thread of hope here uh, that just gets us divine wrath, divine judgment, divine fury, and also allows us to allocate arcane capacitor. At, yeah, capacitor. Um, which isn't that good, but it's decent enough since we do spend a lot of mana, uh, so it should up our um, arcane surge quite a bit. Uh, and at the same time, it gives us a bit more mana um, to work with since uh, we are not too great on the regen, as you can see, and we are kind of gonna be using a mana flask almost all of the time for our sustain. Uh, then a cinder swallow, as always, uh, a wise oak, and um, then just some pretty basic gear, I think. Uh, I mean, it's good, but there's nothing special about it. Just life, cast speed for faster casting so that we can drop our Orb of Storms a bit quicker. Uh, and in that we have uh, flammability, combustion, and curse on hit. So this gives us minus fire res from combustion and also flammability uh, as the curse. Um, a scepter or a wand, uh, I was looking for cast speed, bit of damage, and plus one fizz. So plus one fizz is the important thing. Uh, and then cast speed's a good quality of life. And if you can, a Spare suffix for the chance to deal double damage while focused, since that is when we do a lot of our burst. Uh, tried to get a shield with a bit of life, a bit of damage, and then once again, the plus one fizz and a spare suffix. So uh, we could do that once again. Uh, this thing, which is like one elk, uh, some boots, this has got lots of resists and um, some dexterity, and the belt that I've been using on plenty of characters for some reduced flask charges. Uh, and then a little bit of phasing on kill because it's kind of nice to be able to just run through things but it doesn't really do too much now that we're like destroying screens everywhere uh, and then i was just trying to um, roll up a plus one uh, warlord amulet with jagged fossils it didn't work out we got this guy instead lots and lots of resist and i thought screw it i'll just keep it Got a bit of extra fire damage as well, but we we're going for the plus one fizz. And like I said, if you're really min-maxing uh, in this sort of, in my current standpoint, because uh, not too many people are going to have a plus two chest here, uh, then I'd also get a plus one here so that I get level 30 and another point of radius. But um, then we've got Stone Golem, Herald of Ash, and Blood Rage, and Arctic Armor down here. And over here is Molten Shell, Second Wind, Arcane Surge, and Flame Dash. So we are getting our Arcane Surge popped almost all of the time through these two avenues. But I think that's about it to say about this build. Um, Shield Charge, Fortify, and Faster Attacks. That's probably all I need to say for the character so far. It's been, I think, the dirtiest clear speed or the dirtiest feel for a clear this league so far. Um, if it does the end game pretty well as well, and it looks like it is doing it rather well, maybe build a league, probably build a league. Not much has felt better to play. Uh, my first two points were this, next to this, and then I went uh, these, then these. Um, and as far as starter potential, look, it's not bad for a starter, but this does feel a lot better to have in the build once you get it. And as well as that, uh, you don't get shit for damage, shit for dexterity, while leveling this type of a character. So realistically, I'd say save it for a second character, because uh, it's going to be tough to level without any dexterity, any gear, uh, any damage, because you're not picking up any damage for the first, like, 30, 40, 50 levels, and until you get your sort of ascendancies and stuff, it just won't feel like anything. If you get a second character going as this, you get a bit of um, gear rolling, you can fill out dexterity easily, you can um, supplement your uh, shit damage with a bit of uh, leveling uniques, it'll feel quite a bit better. So I don't know if you should ever do this as a starter, I know people have in the past, but I think it's a bit of an uphill battle. Uh, that said, insane build so far. Uh, you can probably do Blade Vortex as more than just a Chieftain, um, but Fire Chieftain, Beefson, sort of a thick take on this sort of a Blade Vortex meta, I think it's still really good, and I absolutely loved my last one, and I'm absolutely loving this one. Hopefully i got more good news to give you in the next video when we take down some endgame content. That's it for the video, thank you very much for watching, and see you next time.